good day everybody and uh, it's great to be among uh, such a nice crowd and uh, among people who are trying to build things and change things. Um, but uh, thanks Ernest for the introduction. Actually my role here is to explain uh, why the big logo on the facade is uh, in a weird angle. So, uh, and why there are a lot of them scattered around and none of them is standing still uh, as they should be. So I'll just try to explain what, what happened with all the logos and uh, show you how we, how we finally came up with the idea that it's just a bunch of logos scattered around in green color. Uh, Ernest asked, how many of you have been here more than once? How many of you have been here the first, first time or the second time in like nine years ago or eight years ago? Are there any seniors? One, well, and Ernest is number two, so it's just two, two of you. So probably you two remember the first logo, the sofa, uh, and then a few years later, the festival grew and, and got the power engines and uh, took off to the space. And then uh, the last couple of years, uh, it was this one. And then uh, those of you who are old enough to remember some of the first graphics that were around eight years ago. They looked like these. Maybe somebody still has this swag around. And, uh, and then a few years passed, and then those of you who were here last year or the year before, uh, maybe remember the space theme. Like somebody finally drew us as we look actually in real life, right? The tech girls and the coders with the muscle. And uh, remember this one? Yeah, who was here last year? Yeah, more than, more than half. And uh, this is how the texture looked before this. And then when Ernest came to us almost a year ago, he asked to, to, to look at the structure of the festival. And uh, they were doing uh, the branding of, of, the, of the whole organization. And our responsibility was to help with the visual part. And the visual part is uh, actually just bringing structure into all of the elements. If you look at the components of visual identity, then it's just uh, bringing structure with all the elements like the logo, typography, um, composition, colors. We got the green color now. How we use photography. Do we use illustration? Do we use space theme or some other illustrations? How we talk? Do we swear or do we not? Are we polite? Are we kind? Are we aggressive? And how we look online and how all of these things mix together. So we started thinking how textual will look from 2020 onwards. We didn't want to design an identity that changes from year to year, but we wanted something that sticks around for, for a couple of years and uh, also has some options for adaptation and, and growing as we make new conferences from year to year. And then uh, we started thinking, then, what is textual? What, what is textual in, in essence? What's the DNA of the conference? So, and in short, textual is about the ones who do whatever it takes to survive, right? The previous presentation stated that very well, that you need to survive. So, who survives the best? Who survives the best? And, uh, and it turns out, textual is a lot like cockroaches. Cockroaches are the ones that are one of the most survivable creatures on the planet. And uh, there's a lot of similarities between cockroaches and you guys here, and the startup culture as, as, in, as, a, as, a, as a such. Because cockroaches have a very elaborate social structure. structure. They like to mingle and they like to stick around like you. Like you have somebody on your left and somebody on your right. If you go out there, there's a lot of people mingling around. That's actually what cockroach is like. And they like to be together. They know this balance between competition and collaboration. And there's actually a word for it. It's called tigmatropic. They like to be in the dark rooms, like this one, and stick together. And they like somebody around them. And they actually, the only time they come out in the light is to die. So that's maybe what exits mean. So cockroaches are simple, very, very simple, regarding their diet, their living environment, life in general. They are very adaptive. If there's the food they like, if it runs out, they will move to another place and eat something else. And then if that runs out, they will move 
some other place, they can even start eating themselves in the end. And they have very clear focus on survival. So in essence, all of these things actually we can uh, translate to textual identity as well. We want the textual identity to be simple, adap adaptive and with a very clear focus. And this was the task that we started off with. And this means that the identity we're trying to design is, is not for unicorns. Right? The, the keyword that's often used uh, when we talk about startups. So things that are characteristic to cockroaches are not unicorns. So we're designing identity for cockroaches more. And then we started to explore. We wanted to see what are the identity that would be for cockroaches or for startups that are like cockroaches. And uh, we wanted it to be very simple and uh, to use nothing unnecessary. So we thought, OK, maybe uh, we can use the white space as the only graphical elements. We will not introduce any photography, no illustration. We'll just use text and then use the white space, the negative space, as the only means of uh, decoration. And then we explored a bunch of ideas with, with that idea in mind. Then we thought, OK, maybe we can use the structure, the grid underlying the elements as the only element that kind of brings some character to it. And then we explored a lot of, of those things. And you can still see here that, at least here, the logo still is standing straight in the corner as it should be. And then somebody started messing it around. And uh, then, then there was somebody who said, OK, maybe let's, uh, use the, let's use this metaphor of cockroaches and then put them all together in the corner, like different graphical elements as cockroaches in the corner. Maybe that's, that's, that's the way to go. And then there were some other explorations of, of different graphical experiments. What could be very simple, very adaptive, but at the same time have some character, have some structure to it. And we played around quite some time because the simpler the task seems in the beginning, it actually is one of the hardest things to do. So we had a lot of these exploration processes. And then in the end, we came back to this one sentence then, that the identity should be very simple. It should be adaptive and with a very clear focus. And then what we did, we just stripped everything away and uh, got this. Because there's nothing there. It's just a black and white, very simple layout. The, the simplest typography you can find. But if you look at this, it uh, starts to remind you. It's, it's nice and it's simple, but it reminds you of this. It's the recent trend with all the luxury fashion brands that are starting to look all the same. Yeah, it's, I like simplicity, but I, I think you will agree that this is a bit too much. And this is not a meme. That's actually true. And so we uh, said, OK, we like this one, but might be a too simplistic approach. But then we thought, OK, what if we, if all the regular companies, the big brands, they have these 100-page brand books and guidelines and nobody looks at them and then you have a bunch of team that has to go through them and look so that everything looks the same, where Techshow doesn't have that luxury. There are a few people who work at the conference throughout the year and then in the last weeks there's a bunch of people who join in, a lot of volunteers, and they need to quickly adapt and they need to produce all of the stuff that you see around here. So the guidelines, if, if we use them for the identity, they have to be very, very simple. And we actually came up with, uh, I think, one of the shortest brand guidelines in the world. They're just six steps. And uh, surprisingly, this is the case is when after six months of not paying attention, and I come here and I see that everything looks nice as it should be, and nothing is screwed up, where when you have guidelines with 100 pages and you look what the result is in after a few months, it's usually catastrophic. So we said, OK, let's use simple typography-based design. And uh, we took uh, the most well-known and the most used typeface in the world. And we said, uh, let's use the idea of stigmatropic cockroaches. And can we apply that to typography? Can we get rid of the rules that there should be a nice letter spacing and nice line height between lines and within typography, we said, let's use the thigmotrophic approach. Let's just squeeze the lines together. Let's have a bold Helvetica and just push it together. And then just add secondary typeface for the technical information. And then 
just plaster the stickers around with the logo. So that's basically the identity. And uh, then we started looking, can we use this simple rules, this simple system to create enough diversity, enough structure that doesn't look the same. And uh, hopefully you've seen a lot of these pictures by now already in social media, in websites, and here in the venue. And it actually turned out pretty well. And we were able to use just one green color, black and white, one typeface, and these simple rules to create an identity that sticks together and gives enough diversity uh, to, be, to have its own character, and at, yet, at the same time, it doesn't mess up uh, the team. And these are var various uh, visualizations how this simple identity can be applied throughout different materials throughout the last months. And you've probably seen most of the stuff already. And uh, yeah, so I think it's uh, basically we did uh, everything opposite of what we do usually. We used Helvetica as the typeface that it's so broadly used that nobody uses it anymore. So we said that will be our typeface. And uh, we'll use just these three colors. That's it. And then maybe sometime we'll get some other colors. Maybe we'll give some of you some badges with different colors. But that's basically it. And uh, in the end, we'll have just rule number one. You draw a line. Then you create the, type, the text that you need to put on, uh, on your layout. You squeeze it together. Then you add some text to it, maybe some photography. Also, squeeze the, type, the, the photography inside the small frame. Don't give it too much space, so it's like cockroaches. Squeeze together, and then just add some stickers. And that's basically it. The shortlist brand guidelines you, you can get in six steps. That's how you build a startup. Be very, very lean. Thank you. <laughs>